<gasps> Hello everybody, my name is Delzar. So today we're doing a little bit of a reaction video, checking in to say with Channel Foundry, an amazing group of people who have created amazing things. And from these amazing things, even greater possibilities come forth. So please, let's see what the fuck they are doing. Anyways, so this is called How to Beat Every Death Game Ever, which, interesting. I have no idea how the fuck that makes sense. Obviously, it had some saw ass trap. Oh, yeah, the reverse burial trap on someone's head. So, I'm assuming it's like anything that has just, you know, murder as the point where you have to play puzzles to get out. Where a bunch of hapless victims are thrown into some kind of life or death challenge scenario. Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. Hunger Games, Saw, Squid yeah. Game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never really thought much of them. To me, they just looked like popcorn movies. Easy to digest. Hold up, Astral. What the fuck you mean by you're in Toto drip? Are you wearing Toto outfit or are you are you shirtless? Like I can't tell if that's shirtless with or are you wearing the purple with the jacket? High stakes, gruesome spectacles, mm -hmm. more than enough tension to keep you glued to your seat. But then I realized there is something weird about all these stories. Mm -hmm. Or not even really the stories. The way you humans Purple seem jacket. to nice. consume them. If you thought the title or the thumbnail of this video seemed familiar, mm -hmm. that's good. They should be. There are tons of videos on YouTube that look just like this. Extremely Would you popular survive? videos about how, if you yourself were in one of these death games, you might be able to do a better job than the fictional characters in the story, and maybe mm -hmm. even win. And that's so bizarre to me because. Why would you ever want to imagine yourself in these horrific scenarios? You don't want to, but at the same time, people envision themselves literally going out to destroy dragons and save kingdoms. So if you can envision yourself as a hero and a protagonist, you can definitely envision yourself as a victim. Um, yeah, you, you can see yourself as either someone who's able to do everything and anything, or someone who has to struggle and move themselves through life. It just seems like... The strangest kind of self-insert fantasy of all time. And then it dawned on me. It's actually mm -hmm. sort of natural because you're all kind of already in a death game, aren't you? You can't make me self-think. Stop it. Ah, oh, shit. Damn introduction. Lovely. Mm. Are you enjoying the video so far? Yes. I hope so. We release one of these pretty much every week, which means that after this one, you'll have to wait at least another seven days for your next Tail Foundry fix. <laughs> Although, technically, you don't really have to. We've actually made a ton of stuff that isn't up here on YouTube, like this video about the morphology of angels and why artists mm -hmm, always mm -hmm. give them wings, or this one about artificial life as a magic system. We even made a whole original series called Worldsmiths about our favorite authors and the unique landscapes of their minds. And hey, go play some Minecraft. See you, Jackabells. If you just don't want to wait for next week's YouTube video, the truth is, it's actually already out. Hmm. That's right. You can watch it right now, ad free, along with everything else I just mentioned, over on our streaming platform, Nebula. Nebula. Visit go.nebula.tv slash tailfoundry to sign up for just two fifty a month. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. honestly one of the cheapest and best ways to support the show. Thanks so much to everyone who checks it out. Before we talk about death games in fiction, we mm -hmm, really have to talk mm -hmm. about this whole strange video format. There yeah. is, in fact, a whole channel called How to Beat, which is, as you can probably guess, <laughs> A bunch of speculation videos about how to beat deadly scenarios in fiction. Yeah. Many of them, naturally, about death games. The videos are undeniably entertaining. I'm gonna be honest with you. I can't. I I I, I would be a liar to say I haven't watched um a few how to survive spring lock failures. Um. <laughs> and very well put together. In terms of pure fun factor, it's not hard. Not to from see that channel in so particular, popular. but yeah. But when you break down what's going on here, you do start to see an interesting phenomenon. Each video starts with a little setup, 
where the narrator gives some context for the situation they're about to break down. Characters, settings, stakes, all of that. As mm -hmm. the characters in the story face their challenges, the narrator explains what they're doing, why, and most importantly, what you could do differently if you were in their shoes to get the best possible outcome. Yeah. It's a fun, simple premise, and honestly, a lot of the solutions they find really are very clever. Mm -hmm. You can tell they really gave it a lot of thought. In yeah. one of their most popular videos, they tackle the red light, green light challenge from the show Squid Game. In it, they recommend using your thumb to gauge the distance to the end of the playing field. They also suggest running along the sunny side of the court, where fewer players are likely to congregate, and you'd have more space to plan your moves. And mm. since being able to stop quickly is such an important part of the game, you could use the wall there for extra traction and stability. Ah! Stuff, right? Honestly, I didn't really expect these videos to be so granular at first, but they mm -hmm, really mm -hmm, get mm -hmm. into it. You can definitely start to see how you would execute a plan in this situation. Yeah! To the point that you are- Oh my god, the fucking Dan plan videos. And don't even get me started on the Recreo videos too, fuck! Dan plan, Recreo, um, the... Game Gear, you've definitely done a few of those. Um, yeah. I can see it. Almost in a Oh my god, all the channels with the percentage markers on top? Yeah. Out. And that's the really weird part of this. These videos almost make you want to be in these life-threatening scenarios. They highlight maybe the oddest part of this whole genre. That self-insertion element. Last year, Netflix released a reality show based on Squid Game. God. The challenges are all Didn't they have a moment where they got everyone wet, left them in the cold, and then they were literally getting frostbite? Well, just as unforgiving, to the point that several people were actually injured while competing. Unlike hmm. the original show, however, none of the games are designed to be fatal, and as yet, none of the contestants have actually died. So yeah. that's good. But this competition did give people the rare, real-life opportunity to indulge in the same rough conflict in the characters as Squid Game. A true opportunity to self-insert. And despite the facts that there was some potential for injury, that very few people would manage to beat the challenges, and that no one would get any compensation at all besides the one person who won the competition, people still showed up for it. Yep. A lot of people, in fact. The show had 456 competitors, the largest Fucking cast hell. in reality TV history. There's obviously something undeniably exciting about the idea of putting yourself in these situations. So, what is it? What fantasy are you humans playing out in your head with these fictional death games? The most obvious, probably least interesting answer, is that you want to win. There's usually some sort of big prize for the person who comes out victorious in these games. Huge stacks of cash, a status change for you and your family. Depending on how you interpret it, sometimes just the privilege of living another day. It's exciting to reach for something like that, uh, even if there's a lot of pressure on you. I'm now imagining a... Not exactly just... Would divine capitalism be the word for this? Basically, divinity has been... Like, people are praying to all sorts of different creatures and beings to the point that the inflation of divinity is now worth less. So now there is just divine capitalism where gods are paying with divinity to their followers so that they continue to pray to them so that they can then deal it out more. I, <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, the weirdest fucking way of thinking of, like, what the hell? I don't know why the big piggy bank son um, was Maybe just making me think. Especially with that pressure. But that's true for any competition. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't answer the death part, does it? And that's kind of where the Squid Game reality show breaks down. The stakes end with you not winning. In a true death game, there's a lot more to lose. Yeah. And importantly, you don't really get to take them lightly. They're basically traps. Often, the characters in the story are kidnapped, or pressured, or even just accidentally stumble into them, mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. there's no way out but to play by the game's rules. Even characters who do choose to participate, like Katniss in The Hunger Games or Ji-hun in Squid Game, mm -hmm, do mm -hmm. so under extreme duress. Katniss to spare her sister the same fate, 
and Ji Hun because he is on the verge of financial destitution and losing everything he cares about anyway. For both of them, as it's terrible, terrible as, as it is, is, it represents a way out of a terrible situation. And that, I think... When you're one path to success, your golden lining, your singular alleyway that lets you break away from the parade of misery, is lined with barbed wire and tasers. is a crucial element of these games. Not just the prize, but what it represents, especially against this entrapment scenario. Mm -hmm. In so many of these stories, the characters are not only competing for a way out of the game, but also a way out of their place in life. In the Saw franchise, John Kramer mm -hmm. attempts mm -hmm. to teach his victims the value of life by putting them into these games to varying degrees of success. Jesus. In Squid Game, the contestants are offered an incredibly huge sum of money if they win, and are all specifically chosen because they desperately need it to escape debt or pay looming expenses. Mm -hmm. It's fraught and scary and intense. But think about it. Competing in a life versus death competition to solve your greatest personal problems is actually a lot simpler than just figuring out your life. Yeah. I think it's sort of compelling to fantasize about throwing everything into such a discreet, deciding moment. The fantasy of escape is one which permeates not just the environment of the game and its rules, but which reaches into life outside of it as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Life is... If you're telling me all I had to do to make rent was become a hitman. I won't finish that sentence. But most of you should be able to pick two and two together. Complicated. And for all their tension and scary repercussions, these scenarios really aren't. They are. That's a really neat detail having all these swords, axes, spears, and bows be placed gently on top of and in between the rest of the fucking bear traps. I was about to say, I was like, oh, that looks pretty neat as like a pile of weapons. And I realized there's more bear traps in here than there actually is weapons just games after all and in that vein i think it's worth mentioning that not all of these stories do present ways for characters to escape fate it's not always that heady yeah. some of them really are just cruel and purposeless trials that exist purely for their own sake from which the competitors may take a lesson but for whom the ultimate goal really is just getting to the other side with as many fingers on your hands and as much blood in your veins as possible hmm. Nevertheless, you humans still seem to love it, still seem to enjoy videos about these scenarios as much as any other, and I'd bet anything that the reason is similarly hey, what's up, uncomplicated. How you doing? Risk is fun, even when it's your life. It's surprising how easy it is to see life and death stakes as a simple intensity multiplier. This is the one chance you have, and the stakes are arguably the highest they could possibly be under those circumstances <laughs> pushed to their absolute limit human beings are capable of incredible things i don't think precision so realizes what, what we're doing what would you do how you're buying a house in two days nice your focus your strength your determination your ability to rally others take you mm -hmm. would you snap under the pressure would you give up what parts of yourself would you discover that under normal circumstances, you never even knew were there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The rigid structure of a game with rules creates a pretty incredible environment for these qualities to surface. Things are discreet and relatively clear. Now it's all down to you and how you'll approach solving these problems, besting these challenges. Tantalizing for a species of problem solvers. I can hardly blame yes. you for falling into these fantasies. It's exciting to think about doing the impossible. Winning when the odds are stacked. You have no idea what's going on? Okay, so, Patricius. One, I'm doing a reaction video right now to Tail Foundry and checking out how they do it. I'm mainly just letting them talk for the moment because it's them just explaining nothing really I can say in between besides just say, yes, death game be death game. And murder, yes. So I'm waiting for comedic timing. Um, but as to what he's talking about with the other skeleton, um, so I was making an RPG. Right? And remember that killer character that we had you make? Well, the one that we, yeah, you made earlier, which was the skeleton? 
or did you ever make one? I don't remember. But you got a skeleton for you? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, we we've been running it, and the next session of the campaign is within either ten minutes to an hour, one or the other. <laughs> so if you got time today and you want to join a campaign, fuck it, you know. The choice is yours. Because you technically have a character already made, but I lost your stats originally, and these were copied off as astral stats. So, um, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll probably talk about that in between the videos. Act against you, even in a manner of speaking, beating death at its own game. Have you ever seen this... The classic image of death playing chess with its victims. The idea is very simple. If you can beat death at a game of chess, you can escape it for a bit longer. This is a visual that's shown up over and over again across the ages. And to me, that makes a lot of sense. It's empowering to see a human in this position, tangling with a cosmic force in such a simple, digestible way. Human mm -hmm, cunning mm -hmm. against death itself with an actual chance to come out victorious. Very literally, the human struggle... I will say this though, Fertitious, it's not D&D &D in any context due to the fact that this don't use D&D &D systems at all. It, it really don't. It's like Pathfinder mixed with um, Unity Masterminds. I'll leave the link to the Discord that we've all been in for you in the chat. There you go. Reduced to a mere game? I'm sure you see why I'm taking this. The challenges the players face in these death games, while they may be incredibly novel or silly or unnecessarily gratuitous, also act as a metaphor for the struggles human beings face every day of their lives. In fact, in some of them you can very clearly see how exactly they mirror life. Sometimes it's even built <laughs> right into the rules. In the Hunger Games, socioeconomic class divides are reflected in the huge advantage contestants from wealthier districts enter the contest with. Sometimes these dynamics aren't built into the game, but emerge from the conflict the games present. In Squid Game, players are mm -hmm, continuously mm -hmm. pitted against each other in clever ways. And, just like in real life, we see them organize into their own small power systems and struggles, mm. fighting tooth and nail against each other, while the true enemy watches from above. <laughs> safe and unchallenged it almost seems inevitable that this kind of thing will happen when the stakes are life and death the game doesn't even have to be designed to bring these things out it just yeah. will so then it's pretty easy to understand why in the stories the designers of these games so often see them as social experiments and actually lean into that kind of design if you put a bunch of people in a big room and make them kill each other for money what will that reveal yeah. about this society and the people who inhabit it? If you trap a bunch of people who don't value their lives and make them struggle for their lives, will their outlook change? Ooh. As if to put their money where their mouth is, the game masters themselves have a habit of getting involved in the challenges they've designed. In the first the Saw movie, John Kramer poses as a corpse in the middle of the iconic bathroom and only reveals himself at the end. In Squid Game, O oh, Ilnam, the man who mm -hmm, orchestrated mm -hmm, the whole thing, pretends to be a fellow competitor, and we can see him relishing the experience, and then later musing about it on his deathbed. <laughs> you could yeah. just take this to be villains being villains, but I think there's a more interesting angle. I think that the villain is quite literally being the audience. They want to watch just as much as we do. And what's to stop them? Doesn't every director want to see their own movie get? I think these villains may just be feeling what you're feeling as an audience. I yeah. think, just like you, they have a similar dissonant desire to self-insert. And, hm. after all we've discussed here, I kind of think I get it. Like I said at the start, I never really thought much of this type of story. It just seemed like a sort of lurid spectacle Consumes your memes and i guess it is sarah you can't eat my memes out there i have none spawn their own genres where people fantasize about what it would be like to experience them firsthand 
When you strip away the reverse bear traps and lethal children's games and thunder domes, you find that all these games are just smaller, tidier versions of the game you're playing now. Your twisted gauntlet of adult murder games is also the fantasy that escape can be that easy. That your determination and skill and strength of character are, in the end, enough to get you out of whatever situation you're in. Yeah. Your sadistic torture trials are, when you pay attention, a crucible where you get to see in the plainest possible terms what you're really capable of when pushed to the brink. Your televised My reaction just is... No! Is, in its way, a microcosm of mortality itself, and the very human desire not just to live, but to win at living. So, how do you beat every death game ever? Well, if they really are modeled after life, I don't think any YouTube video can really give you an answer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No simple hack or clever strategy is going to solve the fundamental, pressing questions about who you are and how you live that these scenarios bring to the surface. Yeah. There is no best solution for them, because there is no best solution for life. Which is why it's so fun to pretend that there is, to make life and living a much it's simpler so problem to solve, if only for a moment. These death games and the ways that you talk about them don't actually offer a solution, but solving them is cathartic. Mm -hmm, because, mm -hmm. as it turns out, you're already in the most challenging death game of them all. Called life. And I'm afraid that's all for this week. Our next video will be coming out in a week from now, <laughs> so I'll see you then. Unless, of course, you don't want to wait. We've actually made a ton of stuff that isn't up here on YouTube. Like yeah. this video about the morphology of angels and why artists always give them wings. Or this one about artificial life as a magic system. We even made a whole original series called Worldsmiths about our favorite- I will say this as well. I have um, links in the description to the original video. And after that, I also have some links to- well. Both my socials and to my um, membership, if you want to check that out and see what gets a little bit early. But besides that, everyone, please have a lovely fun. Um, oh yeah, I have a topic for today, which is, what would your headspace look like visualized? Anyways, links will be in the description. Support the original people. The unique landscapes of their minds. And, of course, if you just don't want to wait, next week's YouTube video is actually already out and ready to be watched. That's right. You can watch it right now, ad-free, along with everything else I just mentioned, over on our streaming platform, Nebula. YouTube is kind of a crazy place to make content. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy to have this platform. But you have to be so, so careful about your topic choices, your packaging, what you include in your videos. You just start to feel like you're walking on eggshells. Nebula doesn't have any of those concerns. It's an entirely different environment.